Dose Finding Study Why is it important? Application for Cannabis Medical Research What are characteristics of the drug formulation for patient? Why is pharmacy important? How is ADMET important? DDI for cannabinoids Department of Pharmacy, Faculty of Pharmacy, Mahiro University, from Thailand Associate Professor Dr. Korp Tam Sati Rakun Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Associate Professor Dr. Gop Tam Sirakun. I'm now working with the Faculty of Pharmacy, Mahidon University, actually already for more than 25 years. Uh, we are working on new drug discovery and development. Actually, I used to guide the uh, Center for Drug Discovery and Development at Thammasat University, uh, but just finished it three years ago. Uh, we are interested in working on developing the new molecule to treat uh, the patient. And my interested field is on what we call the pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics, which is very important to use to justify the, the actual or the rational dose uh, for cannabis to use in patient. Thank you very much for CISW to uh, invite me to join this event. Thank you. First of all, I would like to thank CISW to invite me to give a lecture. Today, I'm going to give a lecture in the topics of those finding study, why it is important in application of those finding study in cannabis medical research. So first of all, let me consider about the characteristics of the drugs or formulation you need for your patient. Sure, you need, for sure, you need the effectiveness, safety, economical, convenience, patient compliant, less DDR, bioavailabilities, and so on. Those of characteristics have to be contained in one drugs or doses from you are developing. So it is impossible to maximize all of the ben all of the benefits characteristic and minimize all of the drawbacks characteristics of the doses form. So you need to do the trade off between the properties in order to optimize the characteristic to be contained in one doses form, which will be the, the best for your patient. So this is what we call the rational consideration of the doses form. For example, if you would like to get the maximum effect by increasing the dose, but you have to consider that once you're increasing the dose, there will be uh, create the more toxicity or less safety in the patient. So the trace off between effectiveness and the safety is one of the example of the rational consideration. So I would like to explain why those is very, very important for the drug treatment. So this is what's mentioned long, long time ago by the fathers of pharmacology and toxicology, Paracelsus. Paracelsus stated that all things are poison and not without poison, only the dose make a thing not a poison. So you can see that the balance between the effectiveness and safety can be controlled by giving the rational and appropriate dose for each individual patient. We know that the drug, new drug discovery and development process is capital, labor, and time intensive. It requires a lot of effort 
However, shall we omit the opportunities for this? So maybe we have long been underestimated our potential for Thailand. Thailand is a country rich of the national resources and excellent location for agriculture. We have excellent, highly skilled human resources. We have also indigenous traditional information of using those natural resources as a medicine. So shall we omit the opportunities to do the uh, cannabis uh, drugs development? Let me answer this in a, 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 a few slides from now. So based on the traditional knowledge, we may use this to develop traditional formula. Many herbal ingredients are included in this formula or used as an extract from one herbs or isolated compound from extract. As what Western country uh, usually do it. We usually think that the last form as a isolated compound is the most effective, safe, and easy to manage. However, we know that some compound in the extracts or in the formula may have an in a, a synergistic or antagonist effect, which will be the benefit for the patient. And we know that actually some disease we need to treat at multiple target level, not just only single target like cancer. The extracts or formula may support such a treatment due to the advance in drug discovery and development. We have the very sensitive bioanalytical method such as spatial LC-MS-MS technique uh, which we can follow multiple component in systemic circulation. So due to this advance in the technologies, if we use these kinds of advanced technologies, why not we can apply it for the cannabinoid medical research. As you can see in this slide, this graph demonstrates the systemic level of the drugs or pharmacokinetics or PK, which has to be controlled to attain in the therapeutics window range. So it should not go, it should go above the minimum effective concentration and should not go beyond the minimum toxic concentration. This concentration time profile is very important to ascertain the efficacy and also safety in patient. The tools that recommend for each individual patient has to be established based on this pharmacokinetic study. Why PK in previous slide is important this is because the drug in systemic circulation will distribute to organ or biophase in the patients. It is, if it reach the target organ, it will generate a therapeutic effects or pharmacodynamics or PD. And if it reach the non-target, it may possibly generate the toxic effect or side effects. However, if we can control the systemic concentration of PK profile to be rational, as mentioned in the previous slide, we can get suitable therapeutic effect without generating significant undesized or unacceptable side effect. So in order to calculate the dose in particular patient, we need both PK and PD parameter. PD parameter include the steady state free concentration of the drugs in the systemic secretion which will generate the pharmacological effect. However, this number is the most difficult to predict. 
Another parameter include the clearance and bioavailability parameter, which come from the P pharmacokinetics, uh, pra pharmacokinetics parameter. So you can see that we have to use PD parameter together with PK parameter in order to estimate the dose in the patient. Now, how can we apply these considerations to cannabinoid treatment? First of all, let me consider about the physical, chemical, and admit or PK properties of the compounds or molecules which is inside the phytocannabinoid. We have to consider about the drug lineage properties of the compounds or molecules which is available in phytocannabinoid. The compounds or molecule which have the good in vitro activities may not be further developed to be a medicine because they are they don't have the uh, appropriate dark lineage property. For example, if we would like to usually the pharmaceutical company would like to develop the doses from uh, as a oral uh, administration. So if your, your compound cannot be absorbed or it is extensively metabolized by liver or intestine, so in this case, those compounds may not have the drug lineage property. So we can use some kinds of in silico high to put screening to uh, classify whether the drug is appropriate the compound or molecule is appropriate to be a medicine or drug or not. Among various physical chemical high to put screening method, the, the most simple one is called the Limbinsky rule of five. So I will not go into the detail, but would like to tell you that this filter is used to classify whether the compound is appropriate in terms of drug absorption or not. There will be another many kinds of filters, including like Weber uh, filters. So in phytocannabinoid, they have plenty of molecules which is available in the uh, uh, extract. This include more than 421 components and more than 60 pharmacologically active cannabinoids. So combine of this, there will be the synergistic and, and the agonistic. You know, if we give the phytocannabinoid as an extract. The main interest which is the major component of phytocannabinoid includes the TSC and CBD. Based on Limpinski rule of five high to put screening, the structure of CBD and TSC does not deviate from the rule and it has the drug lightness property to develop to be a medicine. However, just only one uh, point that we have to keep in mind is that the molecule is too lipophilic. And this will interfere the pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics of the drugs, which I'm going to explain in detail later. Based on the review on pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics of cannabinoid uh, published in 2018, the conclusion of the review is mentioned that there is an increasing interest in the use of cannabinoid for disease and symptom management, but limited information available regarding the pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamic to guide prescriber. So what they recommend is that 
due to the limited availability of applicable pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics information, highlight the need to initiate prescribing cannabis medicine using a start low and go slow. That means you start with the low dose and gradually increase or decrease the dose approach and carefully observing the patient for desired and adverse effect. However, in order to be able to do a calculation of the dose, now we are on the stage to acquire more pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics information in cannabinoid. Based on the physical chemical property of THC and CBD, it is quite similar. It have high uh, partition, oxygen water partition coefficients, and there there are thermolabi and polylabi. As you can see, in the next slide this is for CBD. There's the same high partition coefficient, oxygen water, and thermolabi and photolabi. The pharmacokinetics of TSC and CBD is quite similar for the absorption, the oral systemic bioavailabilities of the TSC and CBD is low due to the uh, high first pass metabolism in liver and intestine together with its uh, lipophilicity. In order to deviate from first pass metabolism, inhalation is possible. However, the, due to the loss during the administration where inhalation route, uh, the uh, bioavailability is just only about 30 to 40 percent. For rectal route, the bioavailability is about twofold to the oral administration. Uh, the distribution of CBD and TSC is similar as well. Due to the lipophilicity of the molecule, the drugs can be distributed very easily to the brain and to the lipid tissue. And the distribution to the lipid tissue make the drugs stay in the body uh, long. And this will be explained in the next slide. For the drug metabolism, TSC is metabolized mainly uh, by CYP to C9. 3A4 and also actually 2C19. The major active metabolite is 11 hydroxy TSC and inactive TSC carboxylic acid. And then this metabolite will be conjugated with glucuronic acid to increase the water solubility to be excreted in urine. The half line, as I mentioned before, due to the accumulation in the uh, lipid tissue. The drug stay in the body quite long, uh, up to secondary apply of the drug is approximately 25 to 36 hours. And when you consider for the CBD, CBD is metabolized by CYP2C19 and CYP2TA4 mainly, and additionally also another CYP450 will metabolize CBD. The major metabolite for CBD is less active compound with its 11 hydroxy cannabidiol. And the main half life is long, similar to TSC, with its about uh, 24 hours for oral and 31 hours for inhalation. For the drug transport and trafficking, the cannabinoid TSC and CBD is the substrate for the a frac transporter BCRP and PGP, and it also the inhibitors for the MRP effract transporter, and it can also inhibit the influx transporter or organic anion transporter or TP, and organic cation transporter or CT. And once more interesting is that the TSC and CBD can buy with intercellular fatty acid binding protein inside the liver, and this binding play a major role in governing phytocannabinoid metabolism by transporting it to hepatic CYP enzyme. Next, for the pharmacodynamics of PD and therapeutics properties. The action of TSC and CBD are related with the action of endocannabinoid 
which are available in human body. Those endocannabinoids include in alakidonoil, etanoramine, AEA or anandamide, and to alakidonoil, glycerol, to AG. Those two compounds are the precursor for alakidonic acid, which is an important polysaturated fatty acid present in the photolipid of membrane of the body cell and is abundant in the brain, muscle, and liver. THC is considered to mimic anandamide, and CBD is considered to mimic 2AG. Thus, we can call THC and CBD as phytocannabinoid. These two endocannabinoids are produced from omega 3s and omega 6 unsaturated fatty acids from food in postsynaptic neuron in brain. Endocannabinoid producers can bind with CB1, CB2, and other receptors to balance the physiological function in human body. The distribution of each receptor are different. The blue dot show the distribution of the CB1 receptor, which mainly distribute in central and peripheral nervous system, whereas the orange dot represents the distribution of the CB2, which mainly distribute in immune system. The deficiency of this endocannabinoid to buy with those receptors may disturb internal homeostasis of human body and can generate pain, inflammation, metabolic problems, disrupted appetite and sleep, etc. Thus, the phytocannabinoid may be a supplement in order to maintain the homeostasis. TSC has the psychoactive effect, can bind extensively with CB1 receptor and rest extensive to the CB2 receptor, whereas CBD itself has quite small affinity to both CB1 and CB2 receptor. And TSC is mimics the anandamide binding whereas the uh, CBD is mimix the 2-AG binding with CB1 and CB2. This slide shows therapeutic use of the phytocannabinoid CBD, which is, it has already available in the market. Uh, it's used for epilepsy, and neuro neuropathic pain and cancer pain for TSC which has already been available in the market as well. It's used this is a psychoactive compound and used as a pain management, antimedics, antispasmodic appetite stimulant and has been suggested for glaucoma and asthma. Next, I would like to talk more or less about the possible drug-drug interaction for cannabinoid. A review about phytocannabinoid drug, drug interaction, DDR, and uh, clinical implication just has been published uh, a few months ago in Pharmacology and Therapeutics. And this is quite a good paper to be referenced uh, to show the DDI of the available drugs in the market with cannabinoid. This table shows DDR in the levels of pharmacodynamics and pharmacokinetics with many concomitant drugs uh, which is available in the market and the recommendation of using with those concomitant drugs is to do the dose adjustment. So as I mentioned before, the dose is very important and we have to be concerned about doses adjustment if some drugs have to be given together with cannabinoid. Next will be the guidelines and suggestions for cannabis dose fighting. Due to the variabilities among the population groups, which may be related to the characteristic of the patient, diseases, and genetics, we have to include these variabilities in our consideration. 
We have also to include the complexities of COVID-8 in patients as well for the dosage uh, finding study. We have also to include the performance of the formulation in gastrointestinal tract for the evaluation of those finding study, uh, like integrate these kinds of model with this called advanced dissolution absorption and metabolism uh, model into our consideration. And then combines all of this to the physiology of human, uh, integrate to the model called PBPK or physiologically based pharmacokinetics model. Then we can make use of the computers to help us to do the uh, clinical trial simulation or CTS to make a virtual patient clinical trial so that we can use this information to estimate the dose in individual patient. So in conclusion, dose document is very important to determine the successfulness in TSC and CBD administration. Efficacy and safety have to be trade off for the sake of patients. PKPD in each individual may be different due to many factors and co -variate. The DEI which may be possible in the PKPD in each individual have to be identified. Integration of these aforementioned considerations rational dose recommend in each patient will be determined for the sex of the patient. Thank you very much for your attention. If you have any question, please feel free to ask me. Thank you.